Welcome to Mikon's hardware. I have finished testing my EFI 2697AV4 more than a week ago, but I did not have a chance to record this video. And of course, my fluffy cat yet again destroyed my camera setup, so to do not postpone this video, I decided to record using the web camera. But uh, who cares? You are here for the benchmark numbers and not for my beautiful face. Thus, I'm going to go straight into the test results and the benchmark numbers. In this video, I'm going to compare EFI 2697 AV4 with the good old EFI 2697 V3, and also I'm going to add results of the community loved Ryzen 5 5600. For this video, I have redone all my tests, so all the numbers are fresh, using the latest version of Windows, the latest drivers, and of course, all the games were up to date. First of all, we need to take a quick look at the technical specification of the CPUs. EFI 2697AV4 was released somewhere back in 2016 using the famous or infamous Intel 14 nanometer tech process. The CPU comes with 16 cores, 32 threads, 2.6 GHz base clock frequency, 3.6 GHz max turbo frequency, 40 MB of cache, and a maximum memory speed of DDR4-2400. EFI 2697 V3 is a bit older, it was released back in 2014 using 22 nanometer tech process. It comes with 14 cores, 28 threads, and the same frequency 2.6, 3.6 GHz, 35 MB of cache, and a maximum memory speed of DDR4-2133. We all know that with V4 CPUs it is not possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock procedure, thus even though the technical specification says 2.6-3.6 GHz for both of the CPUs, I expect EFI 2697 V3 to clock much higher because of Turbo Boost Unlock. Now, Ryzen 5 5600 is a much newer CPU that was released in 2022. It comes with the 6 cores, 12 threads, but these 6 cores were produced with the TSMC 7 nanometer tech process, and the clock frequency is 3.5 4.6 GHz. Even though the CPU has only 6 cores, it packs 32 MB of L3 cache. Officially, CPU supports up to DDR4-3200, but the CPU is unlocked and the memory can be overclocked to at least DDR4-3600. As you can see, Ryzen 5 5600 is very different to the compared to Xeon E5 CPUs, and thus TDP is also very different. Both of the Xeon CPUs come with 145W TDP, while Ryzen 5 has only 65W TDP. Nevertheless, I tried to make this comparison somehow equal, and all three CPUs were tested with resizable bar enabled, AMD anti-lag enabled, 32GB of memory. With EFI 2697 V3 I have 4 sticks 8GB each, DDR4-2133 CL12. With EFI V4 I have the same 4 sticks 8GB each, but this time they run at DDR4-2400 CL14. And with Ryzen 5, I have two sticks, 16 GB each, DDR4-3200 CL16. This is one of the cheapest memory available on the market, and during the sale period, I paid for this kit less than 65 years. That's why I decided to test with 32 gigs and not 16 gigs. Both of the Xeon CPUs were tested with the Huanan GX99 TF motherboard, while for the Ryzen 5, I used Asus B450M A2 motherboard. As the motherboard uses B450 chipset, it does not support PCI Express 4.0, thus the graphics cards were limited to PCI Express 3.0. Under ideal configuration, in certain games uh, you can get uh, a few extra FPS using PCI Express 4.0, but for PCI Express 4.0 you need B550 chipset, and then we go slightly away from the budget configuration that you could assemble with the Ryzen 5 5600. Oops, one thing I forgot to mention is that both of the Xeon CPUs were tested with hyperthreading disabled, so EFI 2697 V3, 14 cores, 14 threads. E5 2697AV4, 16 cores, 16 threads. Now let's take a look at the memory performance using ADA64 test. AMD Ryzen CPUs are known for their high latency when it comes to the memory access, but when comparing Ryzen 5 5600 to the old Xeon E5 CPUs, Ryzen 5 is still faster. Ryzen 5 5600 has about 67 nanoseconds memory latency, while both of the Xeons respond in about 71 nanoseconds. 
All other numbers are pretty much expected. AMD Ryzen CPUs are known for their slow memory write speed, while quad-channel memory configuration of Xeon E5 CPUs give it an overhead over the dual-channel memory configuration of Ryzen 5. A slow memory read, write, and copy speed with the Xeon E5 CPUs is significantly or slightly faster than Ryzen 5 5600. For synthetics, I have tested CPU Z, Cinebench R23, Cinebench 2024, Geekbench 6, and Google Octane Web Browser Benchmark. If you're interested, put the video on pause and study all the details. But I will mention that even though E5 2697v4 has two extra CPU cores, it is not able to beat E5 2697v3 significantly. And that's all because of Turbo Boost Unlock with E5 2697v3. It is also worth mentioning that with the Cinebench test using just one CPU core, E5 2697v3 actually comes on top of E5 2697av4, and this is also thanks to the Turbo Boost Unlock. With E5 2697av4, we achieve maximum 3.6 GHz super frequency when truly only one CPU core is utilized. But as we all know, nowadays Windows is able to utilize 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, whatever cores. And thus, when running single-threaded benchmark, the CPU is still not boosting to 3.6 GHz of its maximum capable frequency. Additionally, I can remark how good Ryzen 5 5600 is. It has only 6 cores, 12 threads, but the multi-core performance is very close to the Xeon E5 CPUs that pack real 14 or 16 cores. Here I need to yet again remind that I tested Xeon E5 CPUs with the hyper-threading disabled. Nevertheless, Ryzen 5 5600 is still a great CPU, and if you are assembling a workstation, not a gaming PC, and you don't need 256 or more gigabytes of memory, and you do not need 40 PC Express lanes of the Xeon CPU, I would pick a Ryzen 5 5600 over the old Xeon E5 CPUs with a zillion of cores. When it comes to the gaming performance, I have tested two graphics cards, AMD RX 7900 XT and RX 6700 XT, because I have decided to include some of the modern releases that do not have automated benchmark, I had to spend extra time for manual testing, and that's why this time I have tested only 9 games. Let's start with the RX 7900 XT results first. The first tested game is Far Cry 6, here I test high preset at 1080p. Even though the game is very CPU limited, Ryzen 5 5600 is not able to beat Xeon E5 CPUs by much, and that's because the game relies on single core performance but also on the amount and speed of the CPU cache. Here, E5 2697v3 is able to deliver 7900 FPS. E5 2697AV4 is only capable of 7597 FPS. Ryzen 5 5600 is faster, it delivers 1817 FPS. Testing the latest Assassin's Creed Mirage, I use high preset, but I have manually disabled adaptive quality, so the game will not adjust its quality according to the game's performance or according to the hardware capabilities. In this configuration, all three CPUs deliver almost identical performance, about 110 FPS minimum and about 170 FPS on average. Rainbow Six Extraction is a fast-paced shooter that uses Vulkan API. I don't know what has happened with the game, but after the latest updates, the FPS numbers with the Xeon CPUs went down significantly. Here I test using the medium preset with the manual resolution scale set to 100%. Xeon E5 2697v3 is able to render 106-125 FPS. E5 2697av4 is not able to catch up, it delivers only 9715 FPS. And Ryzen 5 5600 is significantly faster, it renders 146-176 FPS. As you can see, minimum FPS with the Ryzen 5 5600 is faster than average FPS with the Xeon E5 CPUs. Counter-Strike 2 is another fast-paced shooter that uses outdated DirectX 11 API. I test a low graphical preset with FSR manually disabled. E5 2697v3 is able to deliver 9696 FPS. E5 2697av4 is yet again slightly behind, 9293 FPS. 
and Ryzen 5 5600 as expected significantly faster, 118-274 FPS. The Invincible is a very interesting Polish game, and if you like this kind of games, then I can strongly recommend you to play through it. The game is not very graphically demanding, and it is also a single player, so here the FPS numbers are not that important. Nevertheless, if i2697 v3 with epic graphical settings is able to deliver 100-178 FPS. If i2697 av4 is yet again falling behind. 108-159 FPS, so the gap is about 20 FPS, but how important the 20 FPS gap in a single player game is up to you to decide. Ryzen 5 5600 is able to deliver much better results, 137-224 FPS, but again it's a slow pace single player game, so 160-220 FPS is not that big of a deal. Shutterline is another fast-paced shooter developed by a Ukrainian studio. Just like Counter-Strike, it uses outdated DirectX 11 API, and just like Counter-Strike, it prefers Ryzen 5 CPU over the Xeon E5 CPUs. So if i2697 v3 is able to deliver 7260 FPS, if i2697 AV4 delivers 7444 FPS, and Ryzen 5 5600 expectedly much faster. 107, 213 FPS. Unlike Counter-Strike and Shutterline, Starfield is a slow game. Here I test high graphical preset, but upscaling set to native, which means the uh, FSR was basically disabled. The game is very graphically demanding, thus all three CPUs deliver very similar performance. If i2697 v3 renders 4179 FPS, if i2697 AV4 4077 FPS, and Ryzen 5 5600 45 78 FPS. Overall, nothing remarkable, but the Xeon E5 V4 was consistently slightly slower than Xeon E5 V3. Alan Wake 2 is also a slow game, and it is also very graphically demanding. Here I test medium graphical preset with FSR set to native, so basically disabled. And unsurprisingly, all three CPUs deliver very similar performance, even though Ryzen 5 was slightly faster. If i2697 v3 delivers 6700 FPS, if i2697 AV4 is only capable of 6695 FPS, so about 5 FPS slower than if i2697 v3, and Ryzen 5 5600 is able to deliver 80 105 FPS. Even though the average FPS is just 5 FPS faster than if i2697 v3, the minimal FPS gap is more than 10 FPS, about 67 FPS with the Xeon E5 and about 80 FPS with the Ryzen 5. F1 2023 or simply F1 23 uses DirectX 12 API and here I test high graphical preset. I test high preset and not ultra because I want to have ray tracing disabled. In this configuration Xeon CPUs are able to deliver about 200 FPS minimum, 270 FPS on average. Ryzen 5 is significantly faster, it delivers 234 FPS minimum and 329 FPS average, but how significant this difference is, is up to you to decide. If even Xeon CPUs are able to render at least 200 FPS at all times, I don't think uh, being able to deliver 270 or 320 FPS on average is that big of a difference. Now let's combine all these 9 results together and take a look at the averages. On average with RX 7900 XT at 1080p with these 9 games tested, if i2697 v3 renders 98-153 FPS. If i2697 AV4 is slightly slower, it renders 96-147 FPS. And Ryzen 5 5600 is significantly faster. It renders 117-187 FPS. Overall, from these results we can see what we are reading you. If you are playing fast-paced shooters such as Counter-Strike, Shutterline or Rainbow Six Extraction, then Ryzen 5 5600 is a significantly better CPU than the old Xeon E5 options. On the other hand, if you're a fan of the slow-paced single-player games such as Starfield, Alan Wake 2, or maybe The Invincible, then even Xeon E5 CPUs will do just fine. 
Of course, there will be some people who were dissatisfied with my results because I supposed to use much slower graphics card or at least I should have tested 1440p or 4K with the RX 7900 XT. And especially for you, I have done exactly the same test using IMD RX 6700 XT. And in this case, the results are pretty much the same, just the numbers are slightly slower. Ryzen 5 5600 is still significantly faster in fast-paced shooters such as Counter-Strike, Rainbow Six or Shutterline. And in the single-player games, the results are still pretty much the same. One interesting result is a star field. If with the AMD RX 7900 XT, Ryzen 5 5600 was consistently slightly faster than the Xeon CPUs, then with the RX 6700 XT, Ryzen 5 5600 is consistently slightly slower than the Xeon CPUs. I don't know what's going on here, I have done my test multiple times and consistently Ryzen 5 was a few FPS slower than Xeon i5 2697v3 with my Starfield test. Overall, testing exactly the same games with exactly the same settings but with AMD RX 6700 XT graphics card, we get the following results. On average, a Xeon i5 2697v3 is able to deliver 9031 FPS. E5 2697AV4 is still not able to catch up with the V3 counterpart. It is only able to render 8627 FPS. And Ryzen 5 5600 is still faster even with RX 6700 XT. It is able to render 9955 FPS. Of course, there will be a couple of sofa experts which will tell me that I just had to disable a couple of CPU cores and enable hyper-threading, and then if i 2697 av3 would boost its clock much higher and I would get much better results. Testing three different CPUs with the two different graphics cards and nine different games is very time-consuming, so I did not have time for in-depth, detailed comparison between different CPU core configurations, but especially for you, I have tested E5 2697AV3 with 8 cores and 16 threads. So I compare configuration 16 cores, 16 threads with the 8 cores, 16 threads. Here, using Far Cry 6 benchmark, which is not very CPU demanding, we can see that even with 8 cores enabled, E5 2697AV4 still does not boost its cores more than 3.1 GHz. This is very disappointing, but it is what it is, and it is what you get without Turbo Boost Unlock. So in this case, even if you limit your CPU to just 8 cores, you are still not getting higher clock frequency. But disabling 8 additional cores, the performance in Far Cry 6 tanks by about 10 FPS. Finally, to conclude this video, let's take a look at the power consumption. I have done a couple of different tests, and if you're interested in the detailed numbers, please put the video on pause and study the graph. I will mention that during idling, E5 2697V3 system consumes about 58 watts. Exactly the same system with E5 2697AV4 at idle consumes about 52 watts. And Ryzen 5 5600 system consumes only 42 watts while idling. So as you can see, Ryzen 5 is a much more optimized platform compared to the old LJ2011 version 3, especially with the Chinese motherboards that have inefficient VRM. Under Cinebench 2024 test, when only one CPU core is utilized, E5 2697V3 consumes about 120 watts, when all CPU cores are utilized about 241 watts, which is rather much. The same test with E5 2697AV4 with one CPU core utilized consumes about 118 watts, and with all CPU cores utilized consumes about 210 watts. As you can see, power efficiency of the V4 CPUs is kinda much better than the V3 CPUs with the Turbo Boost Unlock. In Cinebench 2024, V4 delivers slightly better results and it also has two additional cores, yet the total system power consumption is about 30 watts less. When it comes to the power efficiency, Ryzen 5 5600 is on another level. Running the same Cinebench 2024 test with one CPU core, entire system consumes about 61 watts, which is about the same as idle power consumption of E5 2697V3. With all six CPU cores utilized to its maximum, Ryzen 5 5600 system consumes about 118 watts, which is remarkable considering that the CPU score is very close to the 14-16 cores Xeon E5 CPUs. 
To measure power consumption under gaming conditions, I use Assassin's Creed Mirage benchmark because in this case all three CPUs deliver very similar performance. With AMD RX 6700 XT, EFI 2697V3 consumes about 320 watts, and with RX 7900 XT the power consumption goes to about 450 watts. If I replace the CPU with E5 2697v4, the power consumption goes down a little bit. With RX 6700 XT it is 310 watts, and with the 6900 XT it is 420 watts. With the Ryzen 5 5600 the power consumption is about 251 watts with RX 6700 XT and 376 watts with RX 7900 XT. As you can see, the power consumption difference between the systems is rather big, but it is not as big because the main consumer under gaming condition is the graphics card. So, all in all, nothing surprising, nothing new. V4 CPUs are more power efficient than V3 CPUs, and the modern Ryzen 5 CPUs are way much more power efficient than the old Xeon E5 CPUs. If power consumption is important for you, or you live in an area where electricity is very expensive, then Ryzen 5 5600 is a much better alternative than the old Xeon E5 CPUs, even though just Ryzen 5 5600 costs more than Xeon E5 plus Chinese X99 motherboard plus old ECC registered DDR4 memory. And with this, I have to say that the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs keep disappointing, but at least in this case the performance is pretty much the same between E5 V3 and V4. And if you have one of those HP or Lenovo workstations where it is next to impossible to implement a robust unlock, then Xeon E5 V4 is your obvious option. Now I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, and I hope I have helped someone. Bye for now.